Welcome to the Two Chicks Homestead Podcast. We are the Two Chicks. Yay! Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm Erin, and we talk about homesteading and living on a small piece of land. Alright everyone, welcome to episode 51. Yep. So. Almost hit the year mark, even though we're doing a goofy schedule now, but yeah, well, still. Still, we're, I think next week will be one year. Well, it'll, it'll be an off week, or is this week? No, this week would be our one year. Either way, I'll have to go back and look. <laughs> I know it's sometime in February. But I mean, we're almost at like a year's worth of podcasts. Yes. So we're going to be over over a year. Yeah, because maybe we, last week was... because I thought we started in January. Yeah, either maybe way. Was, I don't know. But 51. Whoever can tell us what day we started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I could go back and look at the posts. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, but yeah, it's been a busy weekend. Yeah. We got to got to jump nice on a few out. things. It was I know. 50 today. I thought it was higher than that. Well, the windows were open. I know that. Yeah, I had to let some fresh air in. <laughs> and then we tried to start a fire and then I had to close the window and then that didn't work and so I opened the window again. Well, we couldn't get the fire going anywhere cuz yeah. it's so wet here. Yeah. But, but the kid want the kids wanted us to try, so. Yep. Yep. It's uh, officially started mud season oh, here. Oh my gosh. It is so muddy. And I feel like I'm like like saying something terrible as a homesteader i hate spring yeah like i i hate this in between time where it's like cold but gross and muddy and just oh yeah but at the same time i know that spring is like supposed to be you know the world awakening and oh yeah stuff growing and yeah, I mean it's it's pretty hard pressed to get a sixty degree, fifty degree weekend in February. Yeah. In Illinois. Yeah. So we take and maybe it. that's where my head's at is like this is not real. Yeah. Like there's still more snow coming. Absolutely, but I hope we get a little bit more snow. We could use We're it. We're supposed to, yeah. So, yeah, we uh, got to jump on getting the trees tapped. Yeah. This weekend. Yep. So last year. We did it, and we got a lot, like a ton. Yes. And then life happened, workshops happened, and we went to go boil it down, and it was all bad. Yep. We had let it sit for too long. And that happens, Mm -hmm. and we are not perfect, and life gets in the way because homesteading is a part of our life. Right. So it was roughly 40 gallons. It was a lot. Of sap? Yeah. We had a ton of five-gallon buckets in the garage, and yeah. we were just kind of saving it up to do one yeah. big run, and uh, I learned a few things. <laughs> I know that you're not supposed to do it when the sap comes out cloudy, so we're going to try and stay on top of it this year and just have the, the syrup and just mix it all together at the end. Well, yeah, we're going to we're gonna burn, cook it down more often. Right. And then at the end, we'll mix it all together, although mm-hmm. it might be kind of cool to have different yeah ones. we could have one straight so what we did we have uh four soft maples here and one black walnut and we tap the four soft maples and the black walnut mm-hmm. and just having that black walnut in there is something totally different yeah, i don't know if i would want just straight i have no idea yeah i've never had it just yeah, straight know. off but mixed in with the yeah it gives it just a really neat flavor yeah, and it's very hard to explain. It's like I was trying to think of how to explain that. If it's more it's, of a nut flavor, yeah, it's or... almost like a nutty. It's slightly bitter, mm-hmm. but it's still sweet. Yeah, and then we learned by reading Little House in the Prairie, they used molasses and added brown sugar. So we used our syrup and added brown sugar, and that was amazing on pancakes. Oh yeah, that was really good, and that like gave it this that sweetness that Mm -hmm. it needed but yeah you don't need a lot of it i mean we still have probably a a quarter of a quart left from two years ago yeah that i mean really you just need to dip your spoon in and like drizzle it because it's so rich i know and it's so dark yeah it's not light maple syrup that's for sure no (laughs) it's heavy the kids don't really love it well, but, the kids have always like fake, fake maple yeah. syrup anyway. Yeah, I mean that that's that's a homestead kid for you right. is to not want. Although, 
I have been baking bread. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned that we were going to talk about that, but I finally found one that my picky eater likes because it's soft Mm -hmm. and squishy Mm -hmm. and it's like perfect on sandwiches. So that was a huge win because my little picky eater doesn't like the homemade stuff. No, you even did one of those Pullman loaves. I don't think she did that. She liked that. Yeah, she didn't like that because the the crust gets too hard and it's just crumbly. Mm -hmm. Where this is finally like soft. Yeah, it's perfect. I even had some today. I'm I love bread, but I don't eat a lot of bread. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today, and that was pretty good. Yeah. So. So it's been kind of nice. Yeah, they did a good job with those. Yeah. And it's been a learning curve for you. Yeah. Um, so at the sap, we're, uh, we have a five gallon bucket on every single tree with a half inch hose going into, a, into the top of the bucket itself. You know, get a lid on top mm-hmm. and then it just goes and when the bucket fills, we'll change it out and go to the next bucket. Yeah. And we use metal tappers mm-hmm. from a place called tapmytrees.com. Right. And I found those a couple years ago, I think. Yeah. And then we couldn't find ours this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm panicking, going, oh, my God, I'm going to order them. It's, like, right before the season's starting. We're not going to get it for a long time. No. It came, like, within three days. Well, you were, all right, so you ordered it on a Saturday afternoon, and it was here on Monday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, so it was super fast. So if you need anything for tapping, tapmytrees.com. They're in Virginia. They're not not, uh, active on Facebook, because I went to go look that up, but. They're super fast. Mm-hmm. Nice, fast shipping, great quality parts. Yeah. And we got the uh, 7 16 tap. So we just get a 7 16 drill bit, drill it on a little bit of an angle going up. Yeah. And then uh, the kids help tap the taps in. And then once they are getting close, I told them to stop so I could make sure I get it in the right spot. Yeah, yeah, they go a little crazy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we put the taps in and you could see it. It's coming out already. Yeah. Yeah, and you said you're out there today, and the black walnut's already dripping, right? Oh, yeah. There's one of them that's already over half full, one of the maples. Well, that's, that's pretty standard. Those side ones on our side yard yeah. always do yeah. a lot. And same with the big one that's over where we park, mm-hmm. the one that's in between the driveways. Yeah, so I think our plan is, like, maybe every weekend we're going to boil them down. Boil it down. Yeah, because, I mean, we only have, what, maybe a month to yeah. tap them? Yeah. So. I think it just depends on the weather. Right. And then we know when, as soon as it gets cloudy, stop. Yeah, when little leaves start yeah. showing up. So that's a good way to know when that's coming up is as soon as the sap turns cloudy, spring's here. Yep. So definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of work. A yeah. Lot of fun. Yeah, I think the first time we did it, it took us 26 hours to boil it down. Yeah, I think I had to leave it. And come back to it the next day. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of hoping that maybe if we're not doing a full turkey fryer <laughs> well, no. thing. All right. So we did the full turkey fryer thing and kept adding buckets yes, to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That was a, that, that and was a I, lot. And I learned because it says you want to bring it in and put it over a stove near the end. So you mm-hmm. don't get gummy, you know, hard Right. And so I brought it in the house and I learned really fast why people have sugar shacks. Mm-hmm. Because that steam is pure, sticky sugar floating around your whole kitchen. <laughs> it was awful. So I think we either, f- I finished it on the grill maybe. Yeah. Or we did it over the propane burner. I don't remember. We didn't use a propane burner because we weren't really using that thing back then. Yeah, but now we figured it out. Yeah. So now that I have that going we can at least uh finish it up on that because we do it yeah. over the our fire pit to start yeah yeah get it going get a nice big fire going that girls can do yeah and what i need to get is like a big fl- you know flat pan like a yeah. rectangle pan because then it's not as deep it's wide yeah and that's that's how they do it okay have to look into that yeah i mean there's i mean i think i found things that tell you how to make a maple or a sap boiler or whatever you'd call okay. it i don't know yeah because we just use a, the 30 quart aluminum yeah. turkey pot yeah which i mean that, that takes a long time <laughs> well yeah <laughs> but yeah i think having it 
cover a bigger space and be not as deep, it boils off faster. Could be. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. Yeah. See if we can find a theory on it. If you know the theory on it, let us know. Yeah. Shoot us an email. Yeah, because we are not experts, that's for sure. No. (laughs) We are here to tell you all the things not to do. (laughs) Or tell you how we do it, and then you can go, hey, you guys are 100% wrong in doing this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's happened a few times. It's all right. It's all in good fun. Yep. But now with Valentine's Day coming up. I know. We had another very romantic. Yep. Love love was in the air in the rabbit hutches. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we uh got two of the rabbits bred um cookie and luna moon hair um so cookie is our first hold back mm-hmm. from a litter um nice nice rabbit pretty chill she's actually the first rabbit that i've picked up since handling rabbits that hasn't kicked the shit out of me <laughs> We don't handle them a lot. We're no. in there quite often, mm-hmm. but we don't handle them. No, we pet them. We hang out in there. We give them a bunch of snacks, but I, I usually I don't pick them up a lot. Yeah. Um, just for simple fact, I don't want to hurt them. Mm-hmm. But this was like the first time I ever I picked a rabbit up and I didn't get scratched to shit or kicked or yeah flipped out on and it just like worked and it was like. Wow. <laughs> so we got her uh, bred with Thor, which is her dad. Um, so line breeding is okay. You just can't breed the litters. Mm-hmm. You know, litter mates together. But line breeding is fine. Father to um, offspring, you know, doe to uh, offspring is fine. But you don't want to do, like, actual litter mates together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, we did Cotton Candy, who is a, I want to say he's a, he's a miniature breed. He's yeah. pretty small for what he is. but And we, we bred him with our other little one. Yeah, which is an English spot. Um, that was another, <laughs> the English spot was a little bit of a goof up yeah. by on my end. I messed up buying her at Earl King because, you know, it's a small rabbit eight weeks, nine weeks yep. old, and you go, oh, hey, it's exactly the color, the color that the girls want. Yeah. <laughs> but that reminds me that when I went to Roll King by myself mm-hmm. during their sale, I we always look at the chicks and mm-hmm. always look at the rabbits, and there was a white, mostly white male, mm-hmm. I don't know, what is he, a Rex? He's a Californian. Californian. Yeah. With feet that oh, were, yeah. like, huge. Yeah. And I was like, huh. Yeah, he's, do we he, have any room? <laughs> he, he he's he's gonna be a big boy. Yeah, so that's good. So we got we got a new one. That's Valentine. Valentine, yes. Um, he is not a showable rabbit, from what I can tell. Um, he still looks cool. He'll make a ma- great. Meat yeah, mud. he's got kind of pinkish blue eyes, and that's why he's not showable. Oh, okay, because he's not your standard color. Well, that's good because the red eye ones are kind of freaky. Right. So, um, he is straight. You know, pretty much straight California coloring, black ears, gray feet, black nose, um, reddish bluish eyes, kind of goofy looking. <laughs> but yeah, he's going to hang out for uh, probably a good four months or so, and then we'll breed him again or mm-hmm. try and breed him and see how he does. But uh, Cotton Candy and Luna this time um, actually got to it right away, and I, it was kind of nice to see. Yeah. Having a new buck here, knew exactly what to do. The doe was, was receptive, and they just did their thing, and three fall-offs later, we're uh, good to go. Yeah, we'll see. So I'll be really interested to see what color they are, because he is a broken tan, and she is a English spot, which kind of looks like a black and white. Yeah, I mean, it might be where we're talking about selling for pets. Right. If they're... Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if if we get some Harlequins out of them, you know, if they got three colors on them and they're Harlequin, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to bet we're going to be selling them. Yeah. So that's just the way it is. You know, we got to pay for feed. Mm-hmm. So if that helps out, awesome. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, we've got how many kits in there now? Six? We have six kits in there now. Um, 
We're going to, I'm not holding my breath on anybody yet. Um, like the new breeders, because this is the first time for both of them. Yeah. Um, I never hold my breath for the first time litters. Yeah. It's just, it's the way it goes. But we'll have six to put in, so that'll be about 20, 25 pounds worth mm-hmm. of meat, probably. Yeah. So, you I can't complain. About two meals each. Right. From them. Yeah. So, I definitely am going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, we got that process day coming up on probably the 25th, I think. Yeah. So, we'll get those guys in the freezer and uh, if move on. fit in the freezer. Oh, that, we'll make sure they fit in the freezer. If not, you got a freeze dryer. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes, I want to try and, and bone one. Or debone. Yeah. But I'm a little intimidated. I am too. I've seen people do it, and it's it looks pretty yeah. involved. Well, I just, I mean, I don't know when you do it. Because it's like when we, because you had to let them sit in the cold water to go through the rigor mortis. But then when we take them out of that, they're so stiff. Yeah, you could do it right away. You could do it right away probably. Yeah, I don't know. You just got to get all the bones out. Right. So it would be as soon as I'm done processing them when they're when they're like movable. <laughs> yeah. You know, as as soon as I get done cleaning them out, then you take them and debone them. Yeah. So maybe that'll be we'll something. See. We it do. might not be a February thing. No. <laughs> we'll no. see. Might be the next one. Yeah. So, because we, I mean, we've been out there when it's been so cold that, I mean, you slice it open and you see the heat coming out, steam oh, the, coming well, the, out. The, the only reason we process rabbits in February is because it keeps my hands warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's easiest way to keep your hands warm while working with them is do it when it's cold out because yeah. they're still warm for a while. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need ice, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, we did, uh, we made some meals with the geese or the goose that we had. Yes. We made, um, what did I do? A pot pie the first time? Yeah, you did a pot pie. Which was, I mean, I don't think I've ever had a bad pot pie, mm. but the flavor was a little oh, off. I liked it. It was with good. With the goose, really? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it just wasn't as good as venison mm-hmm. or rabbit, but then we made it, we made, um, stroganoff mm-hmm. with it which was really good yeah it, had a, it was like perfect meat for that oh yeah yeah i, I was i i'm a big fan of stroganoff like that is my favorite meal beef stroganoff yeah that was probably the best stroganoff we've made yeah and i even shared some with a couple of the guys at work and they're like what is that that tastes like steak yeah i'm like well it's goose <laughs> 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 like, oh, I would have never have guessed. But I, I remember when we made the beef heart that when I, when we were eating it, it was like, oh, this would be perfect in stroganoff. Cause mm-hmm. it's got that, like goose almost has like an, what is that called? An awful. Yeah. The awful, not awful, but it is called awful. Yeah. It's the, um, like the, uh, I know what you're trying to say, like the <laughs> organ meat. Yes, organ meat. Yeah, it's it definitely has an organ meat taste texture to it. Yeah. to it. It was very good. Yeah. So I'm actually looking forward to next year doing that again. Yeah. If we can get a couple. I mean, we still have a bunch in there. Yeah. Well, we'll get more next year. All we gotta do is, hey neighbor. Yeah, really. Because <laughs> he likes shooting them yep. and not eating them. So yeah. Then, but then he, I don't know if we let him. You gave him the pot pie. Do the pot pie, yeah. Yeah. You you gave him the pot pie and he actually liked it. Yeah, which is I'm I'm noticing a trend here. Yeah, our neighbor doesn't know how to cook. Yeah, so anything that we make that he doesn't like. Yeah, he actually he, likes it. Yeah, he comes off and says, "I don't like rabbit. <laughs> I don't like goose." And then I put it in a pot pie and it's like magical pie. I know, because you know how to cook. Yeah, well, most of the time it's good. So, yeah, it's. That's that stroganoff was definitely one of my favorite meals we've done. Yeah, so looking forward to that. And then, so I think that's pretty much main stuff that we got going on. And yeah. then I know there's one other thing that's popping up on Amazon Prime. If you guys have Amazon Prime, Clarkson's Farm. Yep. Now, if none of you know 
about Jeremy Clarkson, you need to go watch the show. <laughs> well, and I know I've seen a lot of homesteading and farming pages share it. Oh, yeah. And it, I have to wonder, like, if they're watching it because it's just about farming or if they have watched him on all on the other shows. Yeah. Because, I mean, it wouldn't be nearly as funny oh, yeah. if you didn't know <laughs> how he was on the other shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jeremy Clarkson is Jeremy Clarkson fame from Top Gear and The Grand Tour. And if you know any of those shows, Top Gear has been on the air for 20 years. Yeah. And even though it's a car show, it's not just a car show. Oh, it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um. Especially when they do their specials. Yeah. Which is what Grand Tour is now. Yeah, Grand Tour is specials only. Um, they did a season of goofing around, screwing around, testing cars, and then they went to the uh, specials. Because I think everybody... They're getting old. Yeah, everybody's getting up in age, and they're busy doing their own stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, But it, I would go with definitely the Grand Tour and watch uh, like the... Scandy Flick and uh, Top Gear, the Arctic one was really good. And then uh, way back when, you got to see what they did with the Toyota Hilux episode, which is hilarious. That's where they took an old 1980s Toyota Hilux and just destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember those. <laughs> They put it on top of a building and then blew the building up. They sunk it in the English Channel, and it started up and ran every single time. See, I think it would be funny if the two other guys showed up to his farm. I think that would be a funny episode. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the two other guys blew up his house once. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if, if you guys have the time to sit down and watch it, Watch a little bit of Grand Tour, Top Gear, and then go watch the first season of Clarkson's Farm. Mm -hmm. And then watch the second season. Yeah. Because it is hilarious. <laughs> um, and speaking of watching or listening, we've got uh, Tim's Workshop Radio coming up on the 19th. Yep. We, um, I think 25 content creators are doing like 15 minute. Oh, it was 12. 12? Maybe it's 12. It was only like from like 1 to 5 yeah, or something in the hours. afternoon. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a bunch of content creators are doing like 15 minute things. Kind of like if you listen to the one on New Year's, mm -hmm. but this one's shorter. Yep. Yeah, you're not going to get a two hour one from yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think it's him and Nicole that are hosting it. Yeah. That'll be a that'll be a lot of fun to sit down and listen to that because I can't wait to hear what other people come up with. Yeah, I know we did a we dropped a special episode in there, mm -hmm. recorded something special for that, and handed it over. So I guess I have to give it a shot. I don't know what the schedule is going to be like. Yeah, but I don't think it's been posted. I'm sure uh, he'll let you know the day before, mm -hmm. or even in the links. Give it a shot. Give it a listen. Let us know what you think. And uh, go support Tim and Nicole. Yeah. I think that's all we got. All right. We'll catch you guys next time. All right. See you on the homestead where something is always growing, eating, or cooking. <laughs>